Hi guys, quick update before we get on with today's project. Um, a few subscribers have spotted this bench that I've been making in the, the background. Um, as you can see, it's almost done. Um, it's all hand riveted, not a weld on it, and it's almost finished. I've just got uh, some inscription to put on the back. It's all hand riveted, hand cut, all the ends are shaped by hand. And so, not a weld on it. The arms are tenoned. That top rail's not finished yet because that's the one I'm going to put the inscription on. All else I've got to do is where those yellow dots are, is drill some holes so it can be bolted down so no one can nick it because it's going in a, a churchyard as a memorial. So anyway, that's a quick update how that's coming on. So I had one or two people ask. So let's get on with today's project. Now I've just discovered Pinterest and it's a fantastic site but I hate it because there's so many projects on there I want to try. Um, it's going <laughs> to, I'm going to waste so much time. Anyway this is one of them, cheese cutter. And I'm going to make it out of stainless steel although the one on there was uh, mild steel. This is a bit of stainless, 16 inches long. Mark the centre and I want to bend it around this jig. So I'm going to get a short heat. You could do it in the forge and cool out one end, but I'm going to just do it with the gas just for ease and quickness. Because you know you know me, I'm usually short of time. But as I say, I really like this Pinterest site, but it's got so many things on there. I just want to have a go at them all. So this is the first one I decided to try. I think this thing was, I'm not sure if it was on Etsy or eBay, but it was quite expensive and it was only out of mild steel. So I thought, I'm going to make one out of stainless, at least then I can bung it in the dishwasher if necessary. Now you want to try and get it reasonably central, because you want the ends to end up the same length. And even though that's hot, this is pretty tough stuff, this stainless. I don't really know quite what I'm up to, but I want to get a loop on the end. Because what I, what I want to do is twist it. I could, I suppose, do it almost from there, but I want to get it a bit closer. In fact, I want to try and start it with the loop at the top. Let's get it warm again. As I say, this is really quite tough even though it's nice and hot. I'm going to have to do that a little bit more because it's not quite round enough yet. I'm not quite sure what to do for the best. I think I'll just persevere with the gas for the time being. Well, I have got the forge on, I could just bung it in there. What I'm going to do is try and sort of fold it right the way around and then open it or bend the legs back again. So I'm going to come right the right way around. So we've got a proper loop on the top there. Now I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do next. I really don't know. Um tell you what, uh, yeah I want to bend them back so I'm going to cool it out and then bend them back individually. There's probably a better way of doing this but you know me as usual, I haven't tried this uh, sort of thing out so I'm playing it by ear. That's better, we'll bring it back and then do the same with the other one. Actually this jig wasn't made for this but it's quite handy, it's doing the job sort of how I want. That's better. That's what I was after. Something like that. Let's get rid of this jig. Mind it'll be hot. Alright, so now what I want to do 
I'm going to get about, I suppose, four and a half inches, I'm going to guess. Hot. And then hold it in the vise. Um, and then just use a bit of bar through the loop to twist it with. So let's get a hot. See what we can do. A little bit longer, I think. I don't can't work this uh, infrared filter out. It's supposed to make things look normal, but that looks an awful lot hotter than it actually looks in real life. Maybe it's a duff infrared filter. I don't know. Don't flood my inbox telling me why. <laughs> right, here we go. Get the idea of what I'm trying to do. Hopefully that, if this was mild steel, that top would pull tight that loop. But because it's stainless and it's tough, it's not having it. So that's why I wanted to get the loop made to start with. Now I want to come down a little bit more. It hasn't quite gone as far down as I wanted. So I'm just going to heat it up and try and get a little bit more of a bend or a twist in the bottom there. Doesn't take long to heat up. I've just cooled the top out. I don't want that to twist up anymore. And then just put a little bit more in the bottom there. Another, I don't know, half a twist or so. You can see it's looking a bit scrappy, but it doesn't really matter because I'm going to heat hit that and flatten it. So we can level it out a bit more, but that's the general idea. I don't know how many twists are in there, but it's about halfway. So we've got about half twist and half um, straight rod. Right, so now we've got it all hot. Now I'm going to straight try and sort of straighten it all out, level it out. I'm just going to push that top ring over a little bit. Now just flatten it, not completely, just. Flatten it down a bit, and that's when you can start moving things about, altering, getting it level. See that twist suddenly becomes level when you give it a couple of taps. That ring isn't level though, but there you go. See how quickly that cools down, but you get the idea of what we're trying to do. It just makes a much nicer handle to hold on to. That ring still bothering me. Didn't get it right in the first place. But hey ho, doesn't really matter. It's handmade. Machine wouldn't do that. Right, just try and push that ring down a bit without damaging it too much. Because that's always the, the risk. When you give it a bosh on the top, it's going to turn it into an oval. Um, it will damage the, the outside. It's still not quite right. I say, never mind. I say, this stuff does cool down pretty quick, although it is very cold here today. Not as cold as it has been, but it's pretty cold. And that's the sort of effect I was looking for. It's sort of a, a ropey type effect. I've just got to uh, cool it out and then I'm going to get the top hot and split that open and try and draw them out. And so it doesn't take too long to heat up. But it just takes forever. Or cools down very quickly, so it takes forever to do because you're always getting it hot and cooling out. It's cooling out so quick. All right, so just split these legs. We just draw them out. I don't want to draw them out too spindly. I want to keep a bit of meat in them. Got enough heat to just have a little go on that one. Just 
try from a different angle. Not much to explain on this, you can see exactly what's happening. Just drawing it out. As you can see quite well how it moves. Just go for another heat. Yet another heat. Someone did say to me on one of my comments on something or other, why don't I heat the anvil up? so that small jobs wouldn't go cold quite so quickly. It took me quite a while to stop laughing. There you go, we're getting there. But talking of that, by the end of the day, if I've been shoemaking on this anvil all day, I could fry an egg on it. You wouldn't want to put your hand on it. The surface gets mighty hot. But I don't think quite hot enough to stop still going cold so quick. Just rounding it off now, very roughly. You can see I'm basically keeping the hammer in one place going up and down, Just moving the material under it, a bit like a power hammer, how that works. There we go, we're getting there. I just got to do this one. Get a bit of a closer view. I'm not using a particularly heavy hammer here. It's only about a pound and a half. But I find for this small stuff it's adequate. If you use anything too heavy, like these greatly ridiculous hammers I've seen people use, four, four pound or something or other, well, can't really see the point. There you go, he might move the material quicker, but you do so much damage to it, that you spend half your time tidying it up. See this way, it might take a little bit longer, but I've got very little in the way of tidying up to do because I've kept it flat, I've kept it tidy. All individual preference, I suppose. So they're about the same length now, just got to round that one off. Each to his own. I was brought up with lightweight hammers. I think the heaviest hammer I used was a about a two pound turning hammer. And that's basically because I was a farrier first and foremost rather than a blacksmith. Farriers use lots of quite fast blows. Whereas blacksmiths tend to use a lot slower blows. So that's how they can get away with a big, great big fat hammer. I don't get on with them. At the end of the day we get the same results. So there you go, that's the sort of thing you're aiming for. Two nicely drawn out prongs. We're just going to put a little curly cue on the end of each one now. Just gently round it over the rounded bit of the anvil. Put it back over the, the beak if you want to. I want to go a little bit more than that, but I think I'll get it warm again. Because I don't really want to want it to split, which stainless can do quite easily when it's if you work it too cold. This really doesn't take long to heat up these uh, tiny little bits. Bring it back on itself. And that's about enough, I think. We'll do the other one. Likewise. Just 
do the same over the edge just give it a little pull around push a bit more over pull it back up we'll try and get them the same or similar they won't be identical but then that's handmade for you So, next job, I think, is going to be put some shape into it. Now, what I'm trying to aim for, I'm just going to call out that very end so I can hit it without damaging it. What I'm aiming for is a bit of a wine glass sort of shape. Or a sort of a rounded, you see, that's the sort of idea. But it's got to be opened up a lot more than that. Sort of wine glass or a rounded catapult type shape. That's what it's going to look like. It's a bit of a catapult. Try and do the similar thing to the other one. Try and do a bit of each rather than get one finished. Um, I just find it easier to do a bit of one and do a bit of the other to make them a pair. I'm just going to get it, trying to see I'm laying it on the top of the fire. I'll show you better here. Just laying it on the top because these arms are pretty thin they get hot really quickly but I want it hot down by the start of the twist so stop any risk of sort of burning the ends off I'm just doing it really gently I haven't got the fire going hardly at all just soaking it you could do it quicker and then cool the ends out but I'm going to uh, just soak it there we go. So it's still not particularly hot up there, but this is what I want to do is open it up down at the base. So it's less of an angle, more of a round at the bottom. Now someone asked me why the beak points to the left. There you go, that's a sort of general shape we want, upside down wine glass. I'm just going to pull that one in a little bit more, I think it's not quite the same, but let's give it another go. Um, yeah, someone told me what, also asked me why the beak points to the left. Well, if you're right-handed, it's more natural. If you watch when I'm working over the beak, I've got my left hand to the left where the beak is. Otherwise, you'd be crossing over yourself we're going backwards and forwards. See now it's got a, a bit better so I can open that up a bit more. See my left hand's over the beak, right hand's just come towards it and it works quite nicely. If you did it the other way around you'd be crossing over yourself and then keep coming back to the to the uh, table. It's just more natural. Some people can get on with it working it the other way but I can't. I just find it's it's more natural. Like when you pick up a gun for the first time, you know whether you're left-handed or right-handed, whether you shoot, or whether you shoot left or right-handed. Even though I'm right-handed, I shoot left-handed. It's just natural to pick it up that way, and it turns out it's my master eye, it's my left eye, so that's about why. Anyway, I'm rambling while I'm fiddling. Just trying to get it a nice, smooth shape. You can take as long as you like mucking about till you get it right. I'm quite happy with that. That's pretty nice now. I, I rather like that. Just about there. I've got to put the wire between the two so you, I want to make sure that they're both sort of fairly level. You can see how it's turned out. 
Yes, I think we got the point. That one on the left there could do with coming in a little bit, but we can sort that out towards the end. Right, so I've given it a quick polish, because before I put the wire on, I don't want to have to polish it afterwards, put it that way. So I've not done it highly polished, just taken the rough off, off, it, rough off of it, because I quite like the black bits. So we've just got to put the wire in there. I'll go over to the bench, see if we can do that. Right. So, just to recap, we've got it polished, we've just got to put the wire through. And what I'm going to use is this stainless MIG wire. It's probably a bit thick. It's, I think it's 0.8. I suppose it would have been better if it was 0.6, but it's all I've got, so that's what I'm going to use. Try and use a bit that's fairly straight with no kinks in it, otherwise it'll look a bit odd once it's on. So what I'm going to do so I don't damage it, although it's not particularly pretty. I'm just going to put a couple of these bits of wood, I think they're a bit of oak, a couple of offcuts from my hacksaw blade knife, I think I used the other bits for the handle. And I'm just going to clamp it in the vise with these, just so I don't do any damage to it, put any vise marks on it. I'll get the camera up so we can see what we're up to. Let's see if we can focus. Right. Now I've cut the wire quite a bit longer than I actually need. Basically because I want to have enough to loop round and get hold of. So I'm just going to bend it round. I'm going to try and keep it tight. That's the whole issue with this, keeping it nice and tight. Get my grips pair of pliers and pull it as tight as you can. Hold it. Pulling it tight with my left hand as well, so keep it straight. Now you could, I suppose, do, I don't know what they call it, where you grab both bits with the pliers and twist it. But I like this particular type of, well it's not really a knot, but with it all wrapped round like a sort of a noose type effect rather than a twist. I'm pulling it up, pushing it down so that the it sort of all lays nice and flat on top of each other. The first one's always a bit of a pain because you've got no real purchase on it. But I think that'll do. So we'll nip off the excess close as possible. And then just use the pliers to just try and push that last little nick back in. You don't want to cut your finger on it. And if you'll be able to see, you can see I've cut my finger on it. I don't think it will focus. It's so dark in here. No. It's not going to, but I think you can just about see. I might try and show you on a different part of the room. Right, I've got it to focus a bit lighter here. You can see that type of, um, well, as I say, it's not really a knot, but the way I've twisted it. Then we've just got to do the other one. Now this one's a bit easier, but you want it tight. So use your pliers from the word going, get it nice and tight. You can see that's actually pulled the uh, metal in a bit. And then work it round. There's probably an easy way of doing it. I'm sure someone will tell me. I don't really want to know <laughs> because I probably won't be making any more of these. But uh, you can see what I'm up to. I'm trying to keep it nice and tight. The stainless wire is 
like the stainless, tough stuff and it, it doesn't like to bend particularly easily. So just going to do the same with this end, just try and push it back into the wire so you don't cut your fingers on it. And also it's something less for the cheese to get caught round. That's why I'm making this one out all stainless. I think the other one I saw had stain, perhaps had stainless wire, I don't know, I didn't say. But it looked like it might have been. But I thought at least you can stick this in the dishwasher. Anyway, there you go. It's quite tight. I'm lucky. Still a little bit soft. If yours doesn't come up as tight or quite soft, there's a little trick which you can use just to tighten it up again. Just bring it over to the anvil, put it over the beak, and just gently give it a couple of little taps. Only gently, and that just pulls it out. And that now, that's as tight as a drum, you could play a tune on that. So that's just about it. The only thing I am going to do, which I never do on any of my stuff, I'm actually going to put my initials on it. I don't normally bother because basically most of the stuff I do is either gets chucked in a bin or um, sat at home as an ornament for the wife because she quite likes a lot of my stuff. But I don't know, just fancy putting my initials on this one. Can't really see them but I'll put some black polish in there, give it a quick polish again. There you go, a rustic cheese cutter. Take that home tonight, see if it works. Thanks for watching, catch you on the next one.